Hello everyone, I am Conquering History Games, and it is here, it is finally here, Hearts of Iron 4, Red Flood, I've been excited about this mod for months, and it has finally been offered to me. Now, uh, first thing I want to say is this is, uh, this is not open to the public yet, so you might see small little things that I'm pretty sure are going to be fixed uh, in the public version of the mod. So for example, there's going to be some focuses, not the country that I'm playing, but in some other ones where there's not going to be a picture on that focus yet. Just little things like that. Uh, nothing too much to worry about. Also, there's no music right now because uh, even though I love Verde, he's in uh, Verde, like he's chilly. You know, uh, Verde, uh, the Requiem, his DSRA, that's the... Uh, and that's the music that plays during the menu, but I'm pretty sure that it's copyrighted, so I've just got it muted for right now. Uh, but we're going to play who I've always said I was going to play first. We are going to hop right in to France, one of at least two French campaigns that I'm going to be doing in Red Flood because there is a variety of stuff that could happen. Uh, let's first introduce ourselves to Anton Artaud, the patron of France, who has become a hero of the artistic state, bravely leading the cliques of artists and disgruntled nationalists into a new nation. Antonin was born in 1896 in Marseille and quickly became one of the most respected poets, writers, and dramatists in France. With a slow rise as his esoteric tastes in plays made him a favorite of many. With the collapse of the former French Republic, Art Taud leads France steadily with the reputation of a hero, liberator of the French nation against the communist menace right at the doorstep. Now, after their failure in the Great War, France was thrown into chaos as its unstable liberal democracy collapsed onto itself. Street battles became commonplace and crushed any sense of peace. The masses demanded justice for the dead, and the post-war youth rejected reactionary traditions. While reactionaries led by Action Francais took power, it was too late as the economy collapsed following the shockwaves of the 1931 crash. From this chaos, Anton, Antonin Artaud, le patron of the national surrealist movement, rallied the masses and seized power. Now France is led by a radical new ideology driven on by two needs, speed and revenge. Okay, let's do it, let's do it, let's do it, I'm excited. Hmm, sure, historical AI in this ahistorical world. Whoa, that was loud! Oh my gosh! Hold on a second. Let me adjust some audio here. Okay. Now we can have some music playing again. Great! So, this is Avant-Garde France. By the way, go check out my French progress report if you want a little bit more detail about uh, this world, or at least particularly France. Uh, but the short version... Pause. That good? Okay, so the short version is World War I uh, didn't really end with the Allies or, or the Central Powers winning. Everybody just kind of collapsed. Uh, France had been occupied for a bit, but then Germany also fell to a communist um, revolution. The Spartacists were basically successful. And the United Kingdom uh, did a peace with honor with Germany. Uh, so, so that's the main situation that's going on here. And we are avant-garde France, uh, really influenced by ideals of futurism, which uh, I'll probably talk in more detail about in the next episode. As in this first episode, at least, I just want to kind of hit the ground running, get some things happening, uh, and reading some interesting events. And then I'll talk about futurism some more later. Also, keep an eye out for other campaigns that I'm going to be doing. Like I said, I'm probably going to do at least one other French campaign. Uh, and I'm also going to do at least one other country, at least for now. There are a variety of countries that have focus trees. So, for example, you have here the German Socialist Republic and their tree. But, you know, who cares about that? Let's take a look at our big-ass tree with a, a variety of different ways to play. Howling with the Wolves is definitely going to be one that I do, either a live stream or a or pre-recorded but uh, there's a lot going on here and some wonderful wonderful art I love it um, so we're gonna start with Le Etat Artiske you know, I'm probably really gonna have to learn my French especially this semester because I'm taking a French revolutions class but it's really funny because the professor obviously he knows French and so somebody went up there and uh, was was talking about we were, we were presenting on bio we were presenting our biographical essays on these these people during the French Revolution 
and this guy goes up he's like so my I, my biographical essay is on Kanis. uh his name is not spelled like how it's pronounced and the professor just just suddenly goes his name's pronounced his name is spelled exactly how it's pronounced <laughs> uh but seriously fuck french um the artistic state is unlike any other state on earth with the sound of artillery fire and the bonnets of cars zooming in roads and cities like Les Soliers being in a constant state of dy dynamicism, we must introspect within our situation to ensure stability in the future with our, politi with our political crossroad. So, we're doing that. Now, you'll notice I'm already at negative political power and I'm actually taking negative political power change a day. That's because we are currently a divided nation split between rural and urban. Um... Our administration was born in Les Soliers and has largely found support in other urban cities, meaning our administration is completely powerless outside of cities. This lowers our political power gain by 75%, as well as uh, creating some other bad things like our surrender limit being low, war support is low, stability is low. Uh, also, because we are accelerationists, um, we get another minus 5% political power gain, uh, but we gain some stability. Or, excuse me, we lose some stability, but we do gain research speed because got to go fast. And I'm really hoping that I put some sort of pictures of the Flash and Sonic in, uh, in, in my uh, thumbnail. So something I was thinking would be a fun theme here um, is... Do we want... Actually, I don't think we're going to do the anti-air. Uh, is if we only have motorized divisions for combat. Maybe I'll use regular infantry for guarding the port, the coast, and stuff like that. By the way, note, Calais is owned by the United Kingdom. Just a heads up there. Um, so, so I just think it would be something kind of fun, because we're always trying to go fast. Whoa, 666! Six, six, six. Oh, yes, Satan! I'm rolling my eyes back. Show us the way. Oh, show us the way! <laughs> anyway, so we're gonna, um, we're just gonna see what we could do. The Garde le Porton. Uh, actually, hold on a second. Because we do have some colonies here. Wait a minute, wait a minute. It's gonna be... Ah, stop it! Okay. So this is... I'm trying to select our armies. Here. There we go. That was weird. Uh, okay. That's colonial forces. We're just gonna put these guys over here for now. Uh, just do a little bit of reorganizing. Oh yeah, I need to go for the rest of these. So we have Le Terre de Future. France is the only major power that upholds futurism in the world, and so we are its sole protector, the sole savior of the Europe of art. We cannot surrender, and we cannot allow ourselves to collapse under the German Spartacus. Then this is pretty important, the abolition, abolishment of the French army. Um, this is going to lower our organization in minus 25% to our recruitable population factor, but our division recovery rate actually goes up. Uh, so, Patron Artois formally disbanded the French army in 1935 to ensure a military coup cannot happen, meaning the defense of France is mostly from Escadron and Asifele militias, uh, which are two of the major political movements in France. I actually really do need to talk about futurism right now. Okay, so let me give you a brief... Um, description of futurism, which uh, if you're watching all of the series, you're probably going to hear me say over and over again, but uh, the first, uh, futurism in our world was actually an Italian movement. Uh, it was artistic in nature, and it predates World War One. although it, uh, World War One in many ways accelerates it, no pun intended. Um, so futurism, as the name implies, is all about we're going to the future, we're rejecting the past, we are rejecting tradition, and um, we are all about uh, uh, d uh, dynamism, and uh, let's see, sorry about that. I'm, I'm trying to pull up some, some futurist art uh, to like show you guys, but it's, it's, all about, it's all about dynamism, it's all about movement, it's about going fast, it's about form. In, and, and, and it had a lot of different uh, kind of subgenres. Uh, in its own way, it would eventually influence surrealism and stuff, but it was, it was a really interesting aesthetic. This is probably the most famous, well, what the hell. Yeah, this is probably the most famous piece of a futurist arc, which is, uh, this is called Unique Forms of Continuity in Space number two, I think? Um, but it's, so that's what futurism is. And so futurism has now become a political power in, um, 
in the uh, uh, the France that we are playing. So, so that's a basic description of, of uh, futurism that we're going to work with for right now. Okay. Uh, let's try to get a couple fighters and close their support up. All right. <coughs> Whoa, I'm so sorry, headphone users. My deepest apologies for that sneeze. Okay, so this is pretty cool. We're already at improved infantry equipment. We also start with mobile warfare. Again, very cool. Because we're gonna we're gonna go fast. We're gonna go motorized. Nice. Okay, so uh, naval dockyards. Let's just do some convoys for now. We're not gonna go to war for at least most of this first year. Uh, while we start setting stuff up, um, start getting people together. All right, organize the motorized. So, like we have these, we have these infantry here for now, and they are all regulars, which is cool, including a veteran. So, so we're gonna use them, but as they die, I'm not really gonna care too much what happens to them. Attention. Let's go, John. Let's go, John. Let's go, John. Hold on. Attention. Nope. Up, 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 up. Damn it. Hold on. Oops, miscounted. Attention. There we go. Uh huh. Attention. Uh huh. All right. New Year's celebration. Oh, this is some fun stuff. Let me pull up another piece of art. There's going to be a lot of art uh, in these campaigns, especially in the um, the, what the these French campaigns. I'm probably also going to read a little bit of poetry here and there. Everybody's rapidly turning the video off. No! <laughs> but uh, here, I'm just pulling up a specific piece of art so you can have a visual demonstration of what's being talked about. So, to celebrate the new year of 1936, Artois, the patron of, or the patron of France, organized an immense. Hold on a sec. Uh, stop. Stop. Okay. An immense public party in Marseille, beautifully ornate costumes and masks were encouraged, and lots of alcohol was available. The party lasted well into the 7th of January, with fireworks fired out of artillery cannons flying into the ground as many ancient Renaissance paintings were burned. In particular, Artois picked out the Annunciation, specifically by Roger van der Weyden, Weyden, a 1400s painting, and ejaculated on it, and simultaneously destroyed it with a powerful rifle with incendiary bullets. The painting was completely destroyed, and the crowds cheered. The party had minimal coverage from the outside world, except for three American journalists with positive views towards France. The party has caused major damages to the city, but everyone had a great time, and now volunteers are cleaning up the mess, and the city continues to be as fiery and fast as usual. The patrons seem to have fun, and our stability rises. Isn't that amazing? That's just terrific. Gotta love it. Uh, so we have a lot of events and decisions here, which we're not really going to use just yet. So uh, what's also going on is uh, we have the Russian Empire here with uh, a lot of puppets, nominally. Uh, we may be able to ally with them down the line. There are definitely options available to us. But the main thing is we have to be ready to deal with Germany. That's the most important part. Uh... I think we can really start to speed Hold some on. stuff up here. Now, there was somebody here who I can basically promote for free. Uh, here, Joseph Darnand. He's politically connected, a war hero, and a career officer, so he costs nothing to promote to Field Marshal, which is rather humorous in a way. Uh, besides that, I really don't think our generals are that great, to be uh, just to be perfectly honest. Uh, it's just no bueno. No bueno at all. Uh, but we'll, we'll figure out something to do. We have our motorized over here. We're going to come get our Charles Noviz here. Uh -huh. And uh, we'll get you. We're going to start uh, preparing for any potential naval invasions now. Okay. There we go. So we will eventually need 20 people there. Uh, don't really give a damn about colonial stuff. I don't think I do. I really don't. Um, so we are gonna... Oh wait, no, these are motorized. Shouldn't these be up here? Huh. There we go, much better. 
All right, yeah, and just like that, we have a better field marshal. Sorry, Varoa, but you stink. All right, let's start getting to some actual events now, since we're about halfway through this video. Uh, and please let me know down in the comments uh, what you guys think. Usually I record a lot of stuff ahead of time, but I'm actually just going to be doing one video at a time, at least for this campaign. Other ones I'm going to probably pre-record a couple at a time, but, but, but what I'm basically saying is a lot of the campaigns you see on my channel, I've recorded all of it already by the time you're watching it. Uh, so I can't really interact with you guys as far as if you have questions, but now I, you know, we can. So, um... Looking forward to that. All right. I really would love to get 50 political power somewhere. Which we're sure get, Okay, so what we're going to do for this one, we're not going to go full-blown hedonistic orgies. Sorry, everybody who was looking forward to that. No, instead, uh, again, the thumbnail should have clued you in. We are going speed. We will collaborate with the Escarron. We cannot accept the influential Batail has... We cannot accept the influence Batail has on France. And so we shall purge his secret society and most of its followers and increase the influence of the Escarron de la Future, removing any artists that are sympathetic to the Asifali. Now this will give me 100 political power, which is going to be important for a reason I'll say when I have it. And uh, we'll get a new economic minister who's going to give us various uh, economy bonuses. Um, oh, also, I should have mentioned this. We are the head of a faction. We are the League of Fiume, which is uh, this under Denunzio here, who is... This is the Futurist guy, and unfortunately he does not have a uh, focus tree right now, but you had better believe that whenever he gets one, I'm running to him, and we're going to have a lot of fun. But he's in it, um, He's uh, uh, and so is uh, Georgia under here, although it is currently called the Kavkaz Society, and so we are both uh, accelerationists, although funnily enough, uh, we are the least accelerationist of them in terms of just pure party popularity. We're only at 48%. As you can see, we have social democrats here, we've got liberals, conservatives, etc, etc. So, ah, yes, let the novel reading begin. A friend of old France. Colonel Maurice de Saint-Pierre was a scarred man, be it phosgene gas, shrapnel, or the effects of sustained daily binge drinking, his body bore the scars of life. He wasn't even 30 goddamn years old, and yet he felt like a man thrice his age. That was France today. Ruled by a madman, populated by the scarred and maimed and walking dead. All pride was wrung out of the country, and its people, um, excuse me, and its people, its dignity bled out in the fields of Verdun and Champagne. It was a sorry state, and Maurice could not... Sorry, it's like I have a... You know what? My nose is running a little bit. I didn't want to give a big snort on, on the thing. Um, anyway. It was a sorry state, and Maurice could not blame those who let it degenerate further, but he was not that kind of man. Here, in the front pour la liberation de la France, du futurisme, de futurisme's headquarters, Maurice sipped a bitter cocktail of cheap gin and even cheaper soda water. Couldn't even get the fucking tonic stuff. Sir, said Private Jean-Paul, handing him a letter. We just received this communique from the Paris cell. Apparently, it is exceptionally urgent. Poor Jean-Paul, 19 years old, completely lost. His entire life plan was set up on joining the army, only for that rat-faced corpse fucker Artois, Artois to disband the army. Most everyone here consisted with, of the leftovers of that moronic move. Disbanding the army wasn't enough to stop the army. No, leaving hundreds of thousands of young men unemployed, trained in combat, and bitter. That would be Artois' downfall. Maurice unfolded the letter and read it. <clears throat> Dear members of the front, my name is not important. All you should know of me is that I am a friend of the old France. As it stands, you and I have much to benefit from each other. I have long known of the Protestant movements against the wretch Artois, and I support them wholeheartedly. It is of utmost importance to me that sanity, like order, that anything but the damned chaos that surrounds us like a suffocating gas is annihilated. I merely ask for your aid. If you wish for me to help you in your noble goal, there's a street in Caen, Rue Capet. 
Caponiere. Put this letter with your response on the back, yes or no. 13, Rue Caponiere. That is, and if it is yes, I shall act. Await my next letter afterwards. Maurice now has a choice to make. We can ignore the letter or write yes on the back and have it delivered to the street. We will be writing yes on the back and having it delivered to the street. Let's see what happens. Okay, pause before I lose political power. Stop! Okay, so I've got 100 political power. Um, so we want to grab Paul Medion. Because uh, we're not going to do... We're not doing Howling with the Wolves. He would That would turn him off. Uh, so because we're not doing that, we could use him to get 0 0.10 um, political power a day. Let's just make sure that is, in fact, our best option. Right. Right. Okay, so we're going to do that. So now um, we're getting a quarter political power day whenever we're not taking a focus, but we must keep taking focuses. Um, so... I think what yeah we, what we got to do we have to centralize the corporate structure uh, unfortunately our corporate structures are disjointed and divided a sad reflection of a broken machine however we can reform and unify our industry into that of a single efficient organism so this is going to increase my production efficiency cap but most importantly the corporate management is going to increase our political power gain by 35 as well as taking away most of the worst parts of uh, the, the divided nation effect um, now it's gonna take a long time we have to go all the way down here before we can get rid of corporate management but the point is, now we can actually generate political power, at least for a bit, you know, for a little bit. Now, the fire of Cain. Early in the morning, Maurice was woken up. <laughs> anyway, from his dreams, the constant replays of Verdun had haunted his nights. One of his commanders had shaken him awake, a hushed, excited desperation in his voice. Maurice, the crazy bastard did it! At least 15 different crazy bastards with 15 different insane ideas ran through his mind. Uh, right, do uh, do we need to clean up? No, look, just clean yourself up. You got a package. Maurice, after a shot of strong liquor and a shave with a rusted razor, stumbled out of his office and into the headquarters proper. Everyone was awake. The air buzzed with excitement as they waited for Maurice. They were all huddled around the radio listening in on the news. Oh, spirit above, the newscaster said, we still have no sign of the mayor. The fires reached the second floor, and the firefighters aren't able to get inside. As the commander had said, there was indeed a package beside the radio. It was wrapped up in thick brown paper, tied up with twine like a Christmas gift. On top was written in pencil only a few words, to a fellow friend of old France. Maurice opened it up slowly, not sure what to expect. Inside was another letter, folded up in a box of cigars. Old cigars, from before the war. Probably kept in some basement for decades before being rediscovered. He opened the letter, his hands shaking. Dearest friend, as you have asked me to, I acted. I sent this package ahead of time so you may receive it either before or after I have acted. I am sure you have heard of it on the radio, about Cain's poor mare. No matter, I believe that this has solidified our friendship. We have important matters to discuss once we meet, which I insist shall be soon. The fate of France is now bound with you, with me, and with every fellow friend who recognizes Artois' government for the falsehood it is. Whatever shape the reborn France may take, I know its birth shall be uneasy and bloody. I can supply men and material to you. Simply tell me what you need. Signed, a friend of old France. P.S. Enjoy the tobacco. So we have a couple options here. We are going to say, a friend indeed. Let us tell the other cells as soon as possible. All right, moving on. Moving along, moving along. Oh, yeah, here's the uh, third international, uh, which uh, has, let's see, it's Hungary, Brazil, and Luxembourg. So that's right, Brazil out here is part of a greater alliance. The future of France. The friend of old France had come to the headquarters of the kind cell. Brilliant blue eyes shone behind his thick cloth. Probably an Arab, or one of the unlucky bastards of a French governor and a maid. That would explain the clothing, Maurice figured. The Arabs had strange customs and stranger dress. Why one would insist on so many layers in the desert was beyond him. But that didn't matter. All it meant was that he drank from his wine glass from a straw. Definitely strange, but Maurice didn't feel like criticizing a new friend for the oddities of his dress was worthwhile. Maurice, my friend, he said, 
I do not know what you envision for the state of France, but let me lay out my vision for the world. We both wish to see our art, art, art it, You know what? Hold on a second. How to pronounce our art out. I'm, I'm going to look this up online right now. Pronouncenames.com Antonin Arto. Artua or Ar Antonin Arto. 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 Okay. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Okay. So, uh, Arto. Uh, the vile state shall be oversown, and in its place shall rise. Oh, we're gonna say. A national rebirth, where France is made once more a great power in the world. Reactionism and authoritarianism becomes more powerful now. Okay, the factions come to blows. The recent escalation of conflict between the differing personalities of the Escadron movement has intensified to an unprecedented degree. The economic question has evidently lit a spark between the egos of our tendency luminaries. What was once typical squabbles in the various Parisian clubs has turned into fistfights, with some cases even involving weapons. One such incident occurred between supporters of Pierre Clemente and adherents of Marcel Bucard's economic policy. In a Parisian bar, a heated discussion between the two groups turned first to name-calling. The Clement faction called Bucard's supporters bourgeois dogs and the vestiges of the old corrupt regime who should have been burned alongside it. Whilst the advocates for Bucard named the Clementis as degenerate communists who should fuck off to Germany, which then turned into a frightful scuffle. As the fight spilled out in onto the street, blood threatened to swarm the district as the combatants brandished knives, brass knuckles, clubs, and razors. As heads were beaten, eyes were slashed, and bodies mutilated, it soon became apparent to all those who had heard the news of the clash that the Escadron was not as united as it appeared. The display of ruthless, unabashed violence by apparent members of the same organization meant this issue had to be put to bed and soon. Any prolonged threat, any prolonging threatened to shatter the alliance that sought to achieve a French utopia. Ego is of no importance in comparison with the existence of the nation. We lose stability. What are we missing? Light tank production. Right, 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 right. Okay. We'll just get a couple going. Uh, let's also get some rubber. Rubber and tungsten. Okay, cool. Now, uh, we have our motorized. I think we're going to put them right here. Like so. Everybody's a regular. Which is sort of good, but... Uh, here we go. The future is French. Sec. You do that. It wasn't long before the propaganda posters started being plastered everywhere. The heretic. Okay, why is it not? Um, I could have sworn I had the. Yeah, pause on notifications. When did that not get used anymore? All right. It wasn't long before the propaganda posters started being plastered everywhere. The heritage of France will not be lost. Death to those who wish to see it burned in revolution. France is being strangled. Will you save her? Maurice walked through the streets, trying not to gaze too long at them. He did not know if the police were watching, or even if people were paying attention at the posters. He just wanted to walk down the street. The friend of old France was valuable. In fact, without his help, it was more than likely that Maurice would be in yet another drunken super, waiting for his day to die. Now there was purpose. There was action. There was hope for free France, springing forth from the wellspring, bringing water to the thirsty. It was in its own way beautiful. But by God above, he was not used to this work. It was hard work. Stressful work. He could feel his muscles tighten with stress, even if he was just sitting. Every morning, he would wake up and notice fresh fallen hairs on his pillow. But none of that mattered. If there was to be a revival of France's glory, then he would gladly work his hands to the bone. Travia... Tra... Traville... Familie... Patrie... I think. <laughs> Boy, I'm pissing off all the French listeners. I just know it. Okay, so we're going to take a little detour here, and we're going to go full speed into the world. Our revolution has brought glory and reunification to our proud people and proud nation. However, the revolution has still remained largely confined within our borders. To restrict a revolution within our own borders would be selfish. We must spread the future across the earth. Which will give us expansionism so we can justify faster. But I want to be ready here for an adventure in Spain. 
uh, there will be an opportunity there soon. Bye. Very, very soon. All right. The headache. A friend of old France. Manuel loved that name for himself. It was simply inspired. Simply, completely inspired. He sat in the cafe, sipping away at some espresso. It tasted like absolute shit. Yet another product of the insanity that had consumed France. If you could not rely on Parisian cafes to have decent coffee, then what in the hell could you rely on? Nothing, that's what. The coffee didn't need to taste good, though. He just felt off today. Like something else was nagging at his mind. Somewhere in the back. Inexpressible and constant. It felt like something was pulling at him. But he finished his espresso and tipped well. The waitstaff deserved it. After all, working for a living was respectable. It was good. It was the type of France he wanted to see, wanted to promote. They didn't even blink when he requested a straw with which to drink his espresso. Of course, people stared at him. They always did. But no one could see his face under the cloth. That was good. He needed to be hidden. Even if the cloth made him stand out, he could just go to Algeria and lay low there. A black car drove up to the cafe and he got inside. The driver was told curtly to go to Cayenne and drop him off on the main street. After that, who knows? Meet Maurice, discuss plans, drink that man's awful alcohol. But if he had to sip some bitter wine in order to destroy Artois, he would. The headache will go away, Emmanuel. Do not worry. Alright, so now we know his name. Emmanuel was not feeling all too well today. There was a feeling, a tick in the back of his mind. What was it? What was it? it? Didn't matter. He continued with the plans. Maurice was in front of him, speaking about something. God, what? Could he repeat that? Speak slower, please, Maurice, speak slower. I am not able to... He realized he wasn't saying that. At least his mouth wasn't saying that. Something flashed in the corner of his eye. Was that a person? Surely one of the privates just passing through a nearby corridor. Yes, yes, exactly. A private moving nearby. In this room that had only one door, no corridors, just he and Maurice. That didn't make sense, but it was the only explanation. He wasn't crazy after all, absolutely not. The people who were insane, they were the ones in power. If he was fighting them, he wasn't insane. That's how it worked, right? That's how it worked. The tugging, tugging, tugging. Someone had looped a chain through the back of his skull. He could feel it, the wounds, the dragging friction of metal. It hurt, it hurt so much. The tugging, the chain, pulling his brain out from his fucking skull. A taut opened his eyes and breathed out a sigh of relief. It was over. He, he was in control now. Gather yourself, I taught. Let yourself... Where were you? Oh, my poor man, what had you gotten yourself into? You lose focus for a few days, and now... Friend! Some man he had seen in his most crisp and clear of nightmares was speaking to him. Are you alright? Are you quite alright? I... Everything clicked. Everything made sense in one terrible, cruel realization. I apologize, my... Friend. He adjusted, trying to figure out what was going on. He was in a building, abandoned. Yes, he could tell that by the, the dust on the windows and the... Yes, okay. This man was speaking, talking about propaganda, about posters, recruiting, arming. He nodded along, listening to whatever he had to say. Of course, Artaud said, pointing to a specific part on the map. We could try to strike here. He pointed at the mansion of someone he quite disliked. Some idiot who really didn't believe in him, or in futurism, and merely in his own power. Eliminating him would be useful. And if these idiots can do it and get themselves arrested, even better. Hmm, Morty said. Yes, I think so. Thank you, friend. I shall organize the forces as soon as possible. Good, my friend, he replied. I shall see you again soon. All the world's a stage. <laughs> well, well, so what did you think of that, huh? Did you see that coming? Let me know in the comments. Uh, now, it's not quite over yet, though. It's already been a bit of a longer episode, but here we go. This is where we'll end it. Maurice was tied to the post, screaming his lungs out about betrayal and hatred. Whatever he was saying, it was completely lost to Artaud. 
He didn't really care what some raving lunatic was saying, screaming about freedom, restoration of France, some vague and ill-defined dream of deposing Artaud and create, recreating a France that would inevitably fall just as the old one they loved. It didn't matter. He sat and watched the madman rave. Three militiamen were laughing with each other, talking about the man they were charged with executing. It was a mercy, really. Sometimes people were just so far gone that to call them people anymore was a form of torture. There were many madmen in France, people so blinded by some love of the past, some desire to preserve what never worked, and Artaud just, just did not understand it. It was understandable, of course, that one would want to keep things the same. Status quos are comfortable, but they are also the bane of progress. Something to be disregarded despite the discomfort, the unknown, the fear that you felt with something new it was no different than the pain and muscles one had after a good run. It was a sign of improvement. Those who denied that would rather watch their own collapse than embrace their future. And now, Artois watched the militia raise their rifles. Maurice stared at him, trying, trying to find some remnant of mercy, some humanity, something other than pure calculation in his eyes. He found none and died sobbing. Another successful foray. Gain base stability plus five percent, and there you have it. Oh yeah, also a naval treaty getting signed or whatever. Uh, that doesn't matter. But there you have it. Uh, we're we're off to the races. We're almost halfway through 1936, uh, and uh, we're gonna you know next episode. Uh, I think we may actually find ourselves at war. I'm not gonna say just quite who. Well, I will say with who because what we're gonna do we're gonna do full speed into the world. And then we're going to try to do a uh, retachism where we are going to try to absorb Wallonia uh, and we're going to see what they do. We could very well find ourselves at war with them, but they have no friends. They're losers. And so uh, it would be an easy war if it does happen. Uh, I'm Conquering History Games. Please subscribe if you have not already and be sure to click that bell so you're always notified whenever new videos come up on the channel. There's going to be a lot of Red Flood. There's going to be a lot of non-Hearts of Iron 4 stuff happening as well. I've got like 10 hours worth of stuff to show you guys. You're going to love it. I'll see you then. Have a wonderful day.